Welcome to Conversations with Tom Shorkey. Conversations explores the past, the present, and the future of the communities in which we live through the eyes of interesting individuals. Now let's join our host, Tom Shorkey. Welcome. Welcome to Conversations. Today's guest on Conversations is Bill Zwing, longtime Cottreville Township resident and a volunteer without parallel in our community. And before we introduce Bill, I want to read a cup uh, saying the definition on a cup provided by the United Way. And it says, volunteer. A volunteer is one who performs or gives services to his or her own free will, an unselfish contributor of time and talent for the good of others, a person whose dedication to a cause or organization inspires others to give of themselves, and one who works much, sleeps little, and cannot be thanked enough. With us today is one of our great volunteers in the uh, greater Blue Water area, Bill Zwing. Welcome, Bill. Nice to see you, Tom. Appreciate it. Now, but we better do a little bit of background first, Bill, so our uh, uh, listeners at home can kind of tune in on who is this guy named Bill Zwing. Before we get into all those volunteer efforts you've had over your lifetime. Uh, grew up on a farm out there on Marine City Highway? Grew up on a farm, a 40-acre farm on Marine City Highway uh, near Indian Trail. Uh, my grandfather also had uh, 40 acres on the north side of the highway. And uh, my uh, dad also uh, rented several acres uh, along with uh, farming. and. Uh, uh, also did carpenter work. And uh, my field of dreams uh, was at the intersection of uh, Marine City Highway and Indi Indian Trail with a, a cousin by the name of Don De Snyder and Dan Osterlin and uh, the two uh, De Snyder twins, uh, Jim and Jerry De Snyder. <laughs> we played an awful lot of baseball and football and at that time, uh, the baseballs were not near as good. I can remember uh, when the stitching would let go, we would take black electrical tape and uh, use these as a ball. And um, actually, uh, my first uh, parents, uh, Theodore and Helen Zwing, uh, have an older brother, uh, Bob Zwing, and uh, a sister, uh, Marilyn Westrick. Well, and growing up in the 50s uh, in this area, I mean, there were... Uh, if you if you went to school in town, there are kids from town, but then there are also country kids because there seemed to be a family farm almost every couple of miles out in the country, and obviously uh, you lived it. How many dairy cows on the Zwing farm? Well, we actually had 16 milking cows at that time with uh, several uh, young heifers that we also had. But the, the Zwing name in the, in the China Township Cottreville Township is a very common name, and there, there were a, an awful lot of Zwing farms, and you can, uh, the, the Walter Zwings, the Fred Zwings, the Norman Zwings, mm -hmm. and they, the, the Joe Zwings, they, they all were farmers, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the area. But um, the uh, first two years of my education were at a one-room uh, schoolhouse, uh, kindergarten, and where and, was that uh, located? That was located at the intersection of Marsh Road and Arnold Road. And, uh, you know, uh, individuals uh, comment of how they used to walk to school and everything. But uh, I did walk to school. I, I had uh, the old cheese house. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, Carla Tuggan and uh, Sharon Tuggan that mm -hmm. lived there. And, and when the weather was, was good, we did actually walk to, to school. Yeah. And um, then uh, at the second grade through uh, the graduation, I graduated from Holy Cross in uh, class of 1964. Uh, at that well, you don't look quite that old. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you appreciate. that. Before we get off your farm, what do you think? Uh, if somebody said, growing up on a farm, what life lessons or, or what what you learn as, as a young kid uh, growing up in rural America in the 50s uh, and 60s? I would think work work ethic, uh, 
you know, at Holy Cross, uh, you know, I've, I've played football, and uh, I can remember, uh, you know, our, our football coach, coaches by the name of Norm Welser and Arnie Muehlheisen in that, even when in the fall of the year, uh, after football practice, there was always chores uh, and, and things that, that had to be done. So you were a, a Holy Cross guy, and after you got out of high school, what path did you take? The path I took is uh, two years of attending college in Port Yarn. And uh, in the fall of uh, 1964, uh, met an individual by the name of Betty Wigington. And uh, Betty and I, a group, uh, there was probably, I believe, about five of us that rode back and forth to college. And, uh, Actually, uh, in uh, the 15th of April of 1967, uh, Betty and I were married at, at Holy Cross. Oh, great. And uh, at uh, June of 1967, uh, I then uh, transferred to uh, Ferris State University in Big Rapids, and uh, Betty worked for Michigan Bell, and um, I graduated in uh, June of uh, 1969 from Ferris State University. What kind of degree? My degree is a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Did you ever think you would someday go back and take over the family farm, or you had other ideas? Uh, other, other ideas. Uh, my farming back in those years is, is much different uh, now. I mean, uh, you know, my dad was a very, very hard worker, but there was always... You know, you did not have the modern farm machinery mm -hmm. that you have, uh, have today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and farms are much, much larger. I believe now in this geographic area, Tom, I know of only two farms that currently have uh, actually uh, milking cows, you know, at this time. But uh, um, our daughter was born in, uh, well, we, I was at college at Big Rapids in uh, August of 1968. And then uh, coming uh, back here to, I had the opportunity uh, when, upon graduation where I could have worked for one of the automotive companies. Would have been in Saginaw. But we wanted to come back where our family was. And uh, then following graduation, uh, our son Scott was actually born in September of 1969. And uh, at that time, you, if you had a bachelor's degree, you could actually teach school if you were pursuing a degree in education. So I actually... Oh, that's right. I had forgot you had, you dabbled in education along the That's exactly... Where was it? Right across the street from here at St. Mary's School here in St. Clair. What grade did you teach? I taught fifth grade, and I was taking education classes at the uh, junior college. But in... Um, July of 1973, I started my career uh, with uh, Consumers Energy. Worked for 31 years uh, in Marysville at the uh, gas plant at 2510 Bush Highway. And you were, uh, but you weren't out there cranking a wrench with the, the guys at Consumers. You were in the business office? I actually, uh, the, I actually started in uh, material services or in the purchasing but the last 17 years of uh, my career, I was in human resources. How does a guy who's teaching fifth grade at St. Mary's, two little kids, how'd you end up landing that job up there in Marysville? You know, it, it was a new gas plant that just came online in, in July of 1973. And I uh, just went through the, the front door, filled out an application, and uh, there was an uh, individual by the name of Bill Anderson that uh, hired me and, and uh, started my career with consumers. Well, it's great. And I think uh, what started to lead you towards why we're here today, you've worn a lot of hats in your adult life. And one of uh, your early ventures was the Cotterville Township government. What? Exactly. G give us a little background on that and what roles did you have in, in the township? The treasurer at that time, and I'm speaking of in 1972, was an individual by the name of Joseph Boves. And uh, he was not going to be running you know, for office. So I was approached 
and said, Bill, would you like to run for the treasurer of Cotterville Township? I said, well, I, you know, I've never, my dad and mother were very civic minded and everything. My dad was the con constable of Cotterville Township. He was the original building inspector. Mm -hmm. But I said, well, what does this entail? You know, and they said, well, you have to attend one meeting a month, and you may write six or eight checks per month. Mm -hmm. So I, I, November of 1972, I did run uh, for elective office and became treasurer of Cotterville Township, not knowing at the time, 35 years I would be with Cotterville Township, and it would evolve from being the treasurer into the uh, supervisor. So of, how many years were you treasurer? You had a I was actually 29 years. 29 years you were the treasurer of Cotterville Township and exactly. then became the supervisor. It, then became supervisor, yes. If there was one accomplishment you'd look back at your time in Cotterville Township, what uh, what challenge did you overcome or were part of? Not not individually. There, there were many things that uh, that we, uh, the, the board did accomplish. I mean, I can remember when I first, uh, a new sewer line along M29, uh, a new water line that was installed uh, along uh, M29. When I was the, uh, the supervisor, we enlarged uh, the township hall and uh, had just a very good uh, working, uh, working board. Met a lot of wonderful people over the years, served who, with a lot of wonderful people. Who are some of the people from the time you were growing up through maybe your mid-adult life that were kind of influential? Somebody you look back on and say, I was probably glad I knew that person because they kind of Well, obviously, right Tom, I, I think uh, my dad, for one yeah. thing. Um, I, uh, I have an older brother, Bob. And um, if you remember, in the fall of uh, 1955, in this area, there was uh, a very serious illness that uh, was in the area. And my brother developed uh, polio. Really? And um, there were several other individuals in the Marine City, St. Clair area. But my brother was very, it, it did affect uh, one of his legs. But my brother was very determined uh, that he was going to get his, his full health back. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, he was a, he, he set the standard. He set the bar for me of, yeah. of you know, determination. Um, also, uh, an individual, uh, my, as I said, my dad did uh, carpenter work along with being a farmer. But in the, between my sophomore and junior year, there was an individual by the name of George Lahodny. And he was the uh, vice president of Detroit Edison for marketing. And he bought a 120-acre farm on Meisner Road. And my dad remodeled the home for him. And obviously, at that point, he needed someone to, to mow the lawn <laughs> and to paint the outbuildings and everything. So uh, George uh, kind of took me under. He, he only had a daughter. And he kind of took me under his wing and, and, and encouraged me. And uh, so. There's a, a whole series of, of individuals, and, and uh, later in life, uh, someone who was just, uh, I really have a tremendous uh, amount of respect, and I, uh, I know the morals that they stand by, is uh, an attorney in Port Huron by the name of John McNamee, mm. and uh, also an um, individual who retired from Consumers Energy, well-known individual by the name of Bill Hainer, oh, have, have been uh, very uh, in, in influence for me. Well, that's great. Now, you're working at Consumers, you're raising a couple of kids, built your house out near the old homestead out there on uh, Marine, City, Marine Highway. City Highway. And in the evenings, you're the treasurer for the township. Yes. Where did the United Way come into play? As I said, uh, Tom, the last 17 years I worked in, in the human resources area. We had an annual campaign for United Way that was always chaired by and coordinated by the Human Resources mm -hmm. Department. So it was just a, we ran that campaign every year. We had one for our, uh, the United uh, uh, Workers of America, mm -hmm. the Utility Workers of America, and then also for the uh, office personnel. 
And uh, upon my uh, retirement from uh, consumers, there was an individual, the, the executive director of United Way by the name of Lonnie Stevens. And uh, she asked at that time if uh, I would, uh, would like to serve uh, and, and be a board member of the uh, United Way. And I served that for a nine-year term, uh, was, uh, ended up being the assistant treasurer, and uh, even today I'm still on the finance committee for the United Way. And uh, again, Tom, it's all giving back to the community. Many people, I mean, we, we have a duty, we have an obligation to, to give back to the community. United Way, there are currently 23 different member organizations that the dollars, the campaign dollars are given back to. And I'm speaking of the, the Visiting Nurses Association, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, uh, Safe Horizons, and the uh, Catholic Services uh, uh, of Michigan are some of the member agencies. Well, now let's frame what we have so far. Kind of a dad raising two kids involved in all of their activities treasurer out at the township, working at consumers. Oh, by the way, United Way board along the way. Where did River District Hospital come into your sights? In 1995, uh, I had a doctor approach me and uh, he asked if I would have an interest in serving on the board of River District Hospital. And it was at that point, that was the transition of where St. John, I'm sorry, where River District Hospital, a community hospital, was being part of a much larger system, the St. John Health System. At that point, I went to the senior management of our plant and asked them, I said, uh, you know, I've been asked to serve on the hospital, uh, local hospital board. It uh, would uh, entail possibly some time being away you know, from the office. And uh, the comment that I received is, consumers energy, we like our employees to be involved in the community. And um, even today, Tom, the, uh, the Consumers Energy Foundation is very instrumental. How they arrive at 45 hours, I don't know. But if, if an employee of Consumers Energy donates 45 hours personal, mm -hmm. you can fill out a form, send it into the foundation board for Consumers mm -hmm. Energy, and they will give a grant back to the organization that, for example, the hospital, if there was a specific project, a new scanner, that dollars would be, go back to the, for the scanner for that major project. Likewise, United Way, if there was a special. So, yes, Consumers Energy, very involved with their employees and giving back to the community. So you've been active with River District. It became St. John's. You stayed with that board. Are you still affiliated with St. John's River District, or well, well, what is your role now? Well, what really happened, yeah, I started to serve on the uh, hospital board. And at that point, it was the transition over to St. John uh, Health. Mm -hmm. They had what they called a system board because St. John is comprised of several hospitals. So I therefore had a seat on the system board. And I progressed up through the system at the local hospital here and actually became uh, chairperson of the board and, and followed just a a wonderful individual who has just given so much back to the community, an individual by the name of Bernie Kuhn. I, I yes. followed him. And um, as I, uh, I served my nine years, uh, you know, with the system uh, board, and during that time I also chaired the finance committee and was also a member of the quality committee. And um, at the, the end of my term, they, uh, I currently, as of today, uh, serve on the St. John Health Foundation Board. And right. uh, I'm actually the secretary of, the, of that board. Now seeing, uh, because of that little cup I read about a volunteer that you don't sleep much and you, you're very active, 
with everything we've talked about, your old alma mater, your parish, Holy Cross, needed some assistance and we won't run your phone number on the TV today because it sounds like you've got plenty, but there's a lot of organizations out there that say, geez, I'd like to get a hold of Bill's wing, but how did you get involved with Holy Cross and, and what is your role with them? Tom, upon graduation from, from Ferris State in 1969, uh, probably uh, we had a pastor by the name of uh, Reverend James Shannon. And at that time, they uh, were having what are called uh, lectors and Eucharistic ministers. And uh, Father Shannon asked myself shortly after if, if I would uh, uh, encourage me to, to be a lector. Mm -hmm. And uh, it became involved with that. And, and there are actually uh, only two of us that are left, uh, our class president uh, by the uh, name of Walt Street and myself are the two uh, lectors. Mm -hmm. and, Tom, it, it's, um, Holy Cross is a very, it, it, very beautiful church. It's a large part of, of our life. And uh, again, I lectured 8 o'clock mass yesterday morning, and there's, ju there's nothing more beautiful than to, to come out of church when they open those doors mm -hmm. and when you see the sun glistening off the, the St. Clair River. And uh, if you're fortunate enough, there might be the a thousand footer by the name of Tre uh, Tregertha or yeah. something like that that will be passing. So uh, became uh, you know with that, and uh, my wife and Betty, my brother was uh, and Jim Fry, were we have a a, a parish dinner in the fall, and uh, my wife uh, and Betty uh, my, and myself have worked for right, almost since the beginning mm -hmm. uh, of working on the the harvest dinner. Um, we uh, had an, uh, a priest uh, about uh, six years ago ask uh, at Holy Cross if, if I would uh, help to coordinate a, uh, uh, a golf outing and, and get it back again. Mm -hmm. So uh, we uh, helped get that, uh, a good fundraiser for, uh, for uh, Holy Cross uh, also. So with uh, w when Bill's Wing calls in the spring about golf outings, you always have to double check, is he calling about River District Hospital's golf outing or is he calling about Holy Cross? That's, that's very interesting because uh, for the past several years, uh, actually this year, the uh, Holy Cross golf outing will be held on the 13th of June at Golden Hawk and right the next day, uh, we will have our 39th annual uh, golf outing for the hospital, which will be at the St. Clair Golf Club. You know, for our audience at home, uh, it's pretty incredible because people think their lives are so busy and, um, you know, maybe I don't have time to do this, that, or the other thing. And when we hear all the things that you've been involved in, as has, you've mentioned a couple times, your wife Betty has been involved. I know if you visit River District Hospital, there's a day or two a week, she's either in the, the gift shop or she's at the, at the reception desk there. And I think Bill and Betty's wing have done something that's been pretty phenomenal, and it's an award that you received probably around 2012. Tell, tell our audience what that award was. Well, earlier, Tom, I, I mentioned the name by, uh, of George Lahodny, that mm -hmm. it had a great influence on me. And George was an individual who gave uh, an awful lot back to the community and uh, with uh, members of the community. <laughs> And he would often say to me, he said, uh, Bill, I, I don't look for anything in return. He says, but if I pass someone on the street, you know, that I have helped, he said, they would just say hello and, and thank you. But in November of 2012, there is an organization uh, for philanthropy. Mm -hmm. And they have what is called a National Philanthropy Day. And uh, as a, in 2012, I received the award. It was, a, a, uh, along with many other individuals, it was a, a large gathering that was held at the Cobo Center. Uh, and uh, uh, there was an article uh, that was written in Crane's Business Magazine. Uh, and you are, at that point, uh, considered a, a professional uh, fundraiser volunteer. But um, it, would, it is very unique uh, that Betty, my wife, uh, also received the same award 
last November in 2015. Incredible. So it is kind of unique that uh, you have a, a husband and wife uh, that have both received the National Philanthropy Award. Incredible. So from that uh, little farm kid out there on Marine City Highway um, that walked to the country school, you say, when you were in about first grade. I know you showed up at Holy Cross in the second grade and uh, uh, finished there. Yes. Ferris, Consumers, Hospital, United Way, Township, uh, Treasurer and Supervisor, uh, you and your wife both winning this prestigious award. Now, Bill, you're still a pretty young man. So when we bring you back, as I've asked other people, when we bring you back to celebrate your 90th birthday, what do you want people to remember about Bill Zwing? Tom, in the mission statement and the values of St. John Providence Health, we speak of dedication, we speak of commitment, and we speak of service to the less fortunate. So I would think that that's what I would like to be remembered, both Betty and myself, of this is really a wonderful community here. When I became a member of the St. John Providence uh, Board, there was an individual by the name of Dr. Anthony Tersini, and occasionally he would come out and visit the hospital, and he called this area God's country, and it, this really is a nice community. It's a wonderful community, wonderful citizens here. So in some small way, maybe I've been able to help make this a, a better community for our residents. Well, thanks, Bill. And uh, for our audience at home, uh, you can see that Bill and Betty Zwing have probably done more than a small contribution to the quality of life in our area. And Bill's the type of person we like to bring into our conversation show and just share uh, stories uh, of people who have made a difference in our community. And as a listener, if you know of someone that you think would make a viable guest on this program, please contact our station. We are at watchctv.org, and at any time, you can go to the station, click on, and if you want to see one of the conversations that we've had over the past few months, click on shows, go to conversations, because we've had many people, and like Bill, who have uh, really made this a nice place to live. And on behalf of WatchCTV.org, Cable Channel 6, covering our part of the Blue Water area, I'd like to thank Bill for being our guest today. Thanks, thank Bill. Appreciate it, Tom. You've been watching Conversations with Tom Shorkey. Conversations explores the past, the present, and the future of the communities in which we live through the eyes of interesting individuals. If you have an idea for a future conversation, please contact us at www.watchctv.org. Thanks for watching Conversations with Tom Shorty.